I'm looking at something I thought I would never see my wife of 30 years do. At this point, she may be done with our marriage, however. It all depends on what she does next. Okay. You see, Corinne told me that she goes out with friends from work, and that is true. My wife also told me that the group she meets with is made up of men and women, and from what I see at the moment, that is also true. My wife is 50 years old, but she looks 10 years younger, and like me, keeps herself in shape. We drink almost nothing. Neither of us smoke, and we have to watch what we eat. We don't eat a lot of sweets or nourishing foods, and we both go to the gym regularly. My wife goes to the gym more often than I do. My job as a warehouse supervisor allows me to be active and fit, so I don't need to put on weight anymore. My wife's job as a public relations secretary keeps her busy, but by sitting at a desk all day, she doesn't feel the need to exercise. As a result, she looks great and trim and looks more like 40 than 50. I, too, look younger than my 50s, although depending on who I ask, most people, both men and women, say, I look 45. That's good enough for me. My name is Gary Smith, and right now I am sitting in a booth at a bar watching my wife and a group of women dancing in a circle. Nearby is a group of men, I assume from her office, and they are propping up the bar holding beers. They are clearly watching the women, and the women are watching the men, including my wife. I don't know the names of all the men at the bar. You see, my wife joined the company very recently, about eight months ago, and this is the first time, as far as I know, that Corinne has gone anywhere with the group. We haven't been invited to any work-related parties, so I can't give you any names. Why am I sitting here? My friends from work said it's a great place to eat and watch sports on a big TV screen, and apparently it's easy to pick up a couple girlfriends here. The latter doesn't bother me, but food and a big screen TV? When my wife said she was going out with people from work, I told her, okay, I'll go too. I didn't know where they were going to go. We have a happy marriage, nothing special. We are both pretty conservative by nature and are a closed couple. We make love four or five times a week and always try to spice things up by using toys, but not on me, but on my wife. We have played with blindfolds and handcuffs, cream, feathers, mink fur gloves, vegetables, you get the idea. We watch and read porn together and even enjoy it. But everything we do is for both of us. Everything we try, we like. If we don't like it, we never do it again. We've done pickup lines at the bar. We've had sex on the street. On vacation, we have fun. Corinne has a beautiful body, and on vacation, she likes to show it off. But we would never invite anyone to join us. Yes, we have been watched when we have sex on the beach, not on purpose. But it has happened. Yes, Corinne gets hit on especially when she wears her black lace dress. It draws attention to her. Corinne likes to dance and is a good dancer, and that in itself attracts attention. I'm not a bad dancer, and if it's just the two of us going out, it's just the two of us. It's all the more amazing to see my wife making eye contact with other men while dancing. Yes, they work together, so there will be a certain familiarity, but Corinna is definitely getting someone's attention. The group of women danced happily, swaying their bodies to the beat of the music. Corinna danced much better than the other women. She wore the black lace dress I bought her as a birthday present. It emphasized her curves, showing off her cleavage and smooth-toned legs. The other women were definitely flaunting everything. Short skirts, tight shirts, high heels, the whole shebang. Not that I'm paranoid, but I'm curious as to what might happen tonight. Hopefully nothing will happen. And at 11 p.m., I'll go and surprise my wife, ask her to dance, and then come home and make love to my beautiful, sexy wife. So with those thoughts in mind, I ordered my food and half-watched the soccer game and half-watched the ladies, including my wife, fight off various men who asked to dance with her to a slow song. True, a few men danced with her, but she only allowed it to fast songs and kept them at arm's length. Several women approached me and asked to dance with them, but I politely declined. Some of the more persistent women wanted to sit with me and talk about their lives, but I politely declined and said I wasn't available. As the evening went on, the group from work thinned out until only two women, my wife, and three men from their place of employment remained. All evening, my wife had attracted the attention of almost every man in the building. Now only these three men remained.
<laughs> the three men moved toward the dance floor, and at that moment I realized that my wife had a choice to make. Either she continues to dance with her new friends, or she stops and calls me to pick her up. I slowly got up and started walking slowly towards the dance floor. Two of my wife's friends were paired up with two male co-workers, and my wife seemed hesitant. It was obvious she was a little tipsy from a few beers and from having a good time and dancing. The man walking towards her was clearly pointing at his co-workers who were kissing busily. One of the men ran his hand under his partner's skirt, kissing her neck. Another couple was doing something similar. My wife's future lover put his hands on his wife's hips, trying to pull her to him. But Corinna stood still, not encouraging him, but not stopping him either. She seemed to be mulling over his proposal. As soon as I approached the couple, he reluctantly enclosed my wife in an embrace. My wife instantly lashed out and pushed him away. John, stop, I'm not doing this. I am a happily married woman, and believe me, my husband would not approve of me dancing so closely with a handsome young man like you. In fact, it's high time I got in touch with him. John, I'll see you at work on Monday. Don't make a big deal out of it except that I like to dance. She stepped back then finally looked up and saw me standing in front of her. For a moment she was shocked, not believing I was here, and then she was startled. Gary, please. She tried to speak, but stopped. John turned and looked at me. We had never met before, so he didn't know what to expect. He sized me up, took in the size of my body, and I think he mentally calculated his chances. I'm bigger than him and a little taller, but clearly older. My wife motioned to me. Gary, please don't do this. Leave it alone. I'm sorry. It's my fault. I didn't stop him when I should have. I don't know how much you saw, but nothing happened, my love. John isn't worth it. She pleaded with me. I looked at John. Tell me, John. Did you know Corinne was married? Yes, everyone knows she's married, and yes, your wife is hot. Trust me, every man in the office would love to sleep with her. He said this with a smug look on his face. Corinne turned around and slapped him. John, you piece of shit, is that how you deal with women? What other woman isn't respected and discussed by the men in the office? It would be interesting to tell Catherine, the chairman of the board, about how the men in her company make disparaging comments about female employees. I watched his face and saw that he needed to do something to restore his pride after being put down by my wife. He did something very stupid by trying to hit or possibly slap my wife. She saw him coming and dodged. His fist almost reached my face, but I grabbed his fist and pushed him away from us. Corinna moved out of the way. I had just enough time to grab John and punch him in the stomach really hard. I left him lying on the floor as he began to vomit. Taking my wife by the hand, I walked through the crowded dance floor and out into the parking lot. On the way, we saw two couples having fun against the bar wall. When we got to the car, I opened the passenger door and Corinne climbed in. She looked worried. I got in the car and started it up. Corinne tried to speak. Not now. Wait until we get home, I said firmly. Gary, please forgive me. I could see tears in her eyes. Corinne, wait until we get home. I reached out and took her hand and squeezed it. She smiled slightly. Apparently, my gesture reassured her. We didn't say anything as we pulled up to the house. I got out of the car first took my wife's hand and led her into the house. I made my way into the kitchen and she followed me. She sat down on one of the kitchen chairs and I went to the refrigerator and pulled out wine and two glasses. I poured each of us a glass and sat down across from my wife. So, Corinna, explain what I saw tonight. And by the way, it was pure luck that I happened to be around to stop you from making a very stupid mistake. My friends from work told me that the food here is good, and if I wanted to, I could pick up a woman to have a good time, but that will never happen. I have a beautiful wife who I love very much. I would never even think of betraying her or cheating on her. So tell me, my love, what did I see tonight? I said it quietly, but with conviction. Looking at her face, she realized how badly she had almost screwed up. Gary, first of all, I sincerely apologize. What happened tonight shocked not only you, but me as well. You know I'm not like that. You know I don't dance for anyone but you, but I have to be honest. I almost screwed up tonight. I really lost my head. You must have noticed that I avoided dancing with several men. The man you hit was John. 
I confess I was thinking about dancing with him, and at that moment I had a very silly fantasy of dancing with a man half my age. She paused to sip some wine. Before you ask, no, he didn't hit on me at work. There is definitely no affair between him and me or anyone else. John works in a different department and we hardly know each other. We've talked to each other at the coffee machine and in the cafeteria, but that's about it. Tonight was supposed to be just us girls, but the men insisted on coming with us. I interrupted her speech. Just one question. Those two women with you, are they married? I asked. Yes, and I thought Janice and Mary were happily married. Well, they told me they were. But honestly, from the way they went off with Barry and Michael, I'm sure they've done it before. And yes, that was their sex against the wall. She flinched, realizing what I was thinking. Corinna, you do realize that if you were one of those women who was entertained at the wall, we wouldn't be talking right now. You'd have packed your bags by now, come to your mother's house, and started your divorce. And your lover would have accidentally fallen and hurt himself in several places. But I'd be here at home, I said, looking at her. Gary, I know the consequences. My love, I understand it all. Hell, if I was really stupid and dumb enough to put my foot against the wall of a building, I'd give you everything and lock myself in a mental hospital. Well, that's good to hear. So I'll tell you what I saw. I saw a group of women dancing together, and then I noticed that they were looking at the bar. There was obvious eye contact between the two groups of people. I saw you smiling and looking in John's direction as you danced. I know the effect your dance moves can have on men, and I saw John smile back at you and encourage you to dance more sexily. And you did, didn't you? She lowered her gaze to the table and said quietly, Yes, I dance sexy for John, I admit it. I like that a young man would want to watch me dance. But Gary, you must have seen him approach me, and when he did, I woke up from my dream. I refused to go with him. Gary, my love, please believe that I stopped dancing for him. I would never go anywhere with him or do anything with him. We both sipped our wine. I was silent for a moment, looking at my wife, my beautiful, sexy wife, who I know can turn any young or old man on with her dancing. So a young man trying his luck with my wife is not unheard of. The fact is that my wife, for a fleeting moment, almost gave in to the fantasy of being with a much younger and fitter man. But she stopped herself. And in the end, she didn't overstep any boundaries. Yes, she was stupid. Yes, she shouldn't have acted the way she did. But honestly, Throughout our married life, I never once questioned her fidelity. Not once have I ever once thought about her not being true to her vows. So can I forgive her for this small transgression? Can I accept that she is human and made a mistake? What if I hadn't been there for her? Gary, I know what you're thinking. You're wondering if you hadn't been around, would I have left with John? The honest answer and the truth is that I was already waking up from my dream of being with John. You probably won't believe this, but I was already starting to imagine myself dancing with you. But then, of course, he grabbed me, and that's when you were there to stop him. Thank you for saving me, my love. She slowly reached out and touched my hand with hers. Gary, I love you and always will. I promise you that I will never do anything like this again. I will never dance with anyone but you. I swear to you, my love, I only want you. Tonight was a very stupid mistake. She sighed, and there will be consequences for John. He obviously set the whole thing up, and like a fool, I accepted the invitation to go out with them. Yes, I'll honestly admit that a handsome man much younger than me asking if I'd like to join a group of my co-workers on a night out is flattering, but I should have been more careful. Corinne sipped her wine again and continued. My love, I didn't know what was going to happen tonight. I just thought it would be a harmless dance. You know, I love dancing, and I'm sure you saw that at first we were just dancing together. But to my regret, I let my body think more than my brain. But it was only for a moment, just a passing fantasy. Gary, I certainly didn't imagine other couples having sex with each other, and I would never get involved with John or anyone else. I looked at her with a clearly skeptical expression on my face. Gary, please understand I'm going to tell my boss what happened talk to Barry and Michael's wives about their behavior, and talk to Mary and Janice's husbands, and if I ever go out with my friends from work again, you're coming with me. I fell silent, letting my wife sweat. 
My mind was running through what I had seen. In fact, I saw a beautiful woman dancing with her friends and probably arousing a whole group of men. And I saw this woman smiling at a young, trim colleague from work, as my wife said. Doesn't every middle-aged man or woman have a fantasy of getting someone younger to pay attention to them? Hell, I love it when young women smile at me. And most importantly, I saw a beautiful married woman tell this young friend from work that she didn't want to dance with him, nor did she want to leave with him to hook up. Of course, at this point, I intervened. But wouldn't any sane husband intervene at such a moment? I looked at my wife, who was clearly very worried about how badly she had screwed up. She knows my views on extramarital sex. She knows that I would never tolerate her having sex with me, with or without my consent. Gary, what are you thinking? She said quietly. I'm thinking about the fact that I love you very much, the fact that you haven't cheated on me, and the fact that you're still a little naive about men and our thinking, especially young men who want to get into an older woman's underwear. So from now on, you don't date John, Barry, or Michael. Don't go on dates with Mary or Janice, and most importantly, don't socialize with any of these people. If you want to have a night out, it's just you and me and no one else. So all I have to do to get back in your good books is to stop being friends with a group of cheaters. Stop being so trusting of young, eligible men. Go on dates exclusively with you, which we already do except for tonight. Dance exclusively with you. And as an extra favor, I will do whatever you want sexually. Honestly, Gary, I know I almost screwed up. I know I let my body do the thinking for me. It'll never happen again. She squeezed my hand tightly. I kept a neutral expression on my face. I pondered every word she said. Anything sexy? I asked, smiling. She smiled back. Yes, anything. As long as it doesn't hurt or leave marks, you can do anything you want to me. She stood up and took off her dress. Gary, this body is yours, from head to toe. No one has touched this body but you, and please believe that only you will touch me. Yes, men ask me to dance with them but I will always ask your permission and only dance with someone we both know. Thank you, my love. I needed that. I love you forever, my handsome husband. Only you, my love. Eventually, we separated. We stood up. I took my wife's hand. She took her glass and bottle of wine. We went upstairs, and my wife began to work on her penance. She did a very good job of convincing me to forgive her. Epilogue. Were there any consequences for my wife? Well, no, except that for a few months I felt like a king. Anytime and anywhere I wanted, we had sex. Actually, we made love. We played all the games that lovers play. Nothing was forbidden. But as always, we satisfied each other. We don't need to find another place to have sex. Eventually, we both got tired of too much sex and games and just went back to our normal life and our normal sex life. You know, Four or five times a week, we go dancing with friends or family, getting private lap dances from my wife, and that kind of normal life. Does my wife still get asked to dance? Yes, she is invited, but does she dance with anyone other than me, friends or family? No, she does not. We go to her work parties, just the two of us, it's non-negotiable. Quite a few of her male co-workers ask to dance with her, but again, the answer is always no. As for John and the wives and husbands from the night parties, let's just say all four are single now. Nothing official, but Catherine, my wife's boss and chairman of the board, talked to these people and told them that their future at the company was not good and that they needed to prove that they were focused enough to be worthy of being kept at the company and they were all demoted to very low and boring jobs. And as for John, every time he sees my wife, he runs away. Perhaps it's because I visited him and told him that if he ever talks to my wife about anything other than work matters— I'll pay him another visit, and he'll regret talking to my wife at all. I didn't say exactly what would happen, but I think he got the point. The day after the party, my wife came home and told me that John had sent her an email apologizing for his behavior. Life is good. My wife now understands exactly how far one can go, and I know to let her have fun but to tighten the reins if necessary. I've never had to tighten the reins.